Okay, this video is for Glenn, Pepper Pete. You wanted to see some video of the uh, door situation. Um, anyway, here it is real quick. I tried this last night, my video was too long and I have, I'm having to make some little short videos. Here's the gear, worm gear driven. I actually cut down my spring modification that I did earlier to break away some of that wobbliness. Anyway, there they are. Here's the door, so I gotta keep these videos kind of shorter. YouTube kicks them off. You'll notice that recess right there that actually you can actually see through the intake duct is for the relief for the size wheel it is. See if I can get in there and let everybody see it. Kind of hard to see. No. I can't get the video camera in there to take a peek at it. Let's try again. Yeah, you might be able to kind of see it in there. I've paint, tried to paint it white, but anyway, that, that hump right there is for the wheel. Pretty tight confinement. So, to be able to go larger on this wheel without having to hollow out on the foam doors, I don't think it's much possible to get bigger wheels on this at all. You might be able to squeeze a quarter of an inch with some uh, hollowing out on the foam to relief because the wheel does sit almost right up against the door. There's not much play. I've checked it. There is a network of stringing right there in order to pull all the deer, gear doors closed, but it works really nicely. Close up of the motor situation there in that shaft. The shaft on these, as opposed to the other ones we have, is twice the diameter. It's a lot beefier than the other plastic LX retracts. This guy right here, the strut in the back, is just held on with two C-clips. You can actually take those off and, and separate this from it. And then there's a cap right there. That's why I had mine boogered up. You saw some chew marks on it because this is all aluminum right here. These little caps are, uh, I think they're plastic, these pins. But you can pull this off and change your springs and the C-clip is back on. Real easy to do to beef up this springing action right here but you saw from the other video that put too much on it uh, she's really kind of acts like a drunk lady on, out in the grass on her wheels real prone to being tipsy here's some of the nose got five doors on the nose. You got the scale nose, the scale nose doors here that close. Here, and the guy here in the back. So got a string around it tying it. The landing gear system on this one's on a on a uh, pull pull system. Looks like they're using Tower Pro servos this time instead of some of the other ones. Uh, I haven't been able to get any strip out up until yesterday. I had a flap servo burn up on me actually got hot and melted and stripped out first servo of the airplane it's uh, about the last three weeks I've had the plane that went bad so I had to replace them yesterday which I use HXT 900s Nose door got this nifty little drag link. It actually it actually works. It pivots right here. Uh, I've got it taped down because I noticed when I was out taxiing last time that if it's 
falls to the down position, it'd be like a spike in the grass, really jam up the nose gear, so I taped it in place. Uh, the problem I was having on that other video was I didn't have this collar glued on right here, so it was everything was slipping off because you slide this collar off and then just slide this up. This is just a guide rod. This is plastic in the side of an aluminum tube, solid piece of plastic rod. That this will just come right out and beep, and you can change your springs in here. Uh, there was actually one. I've actually put two of two springs in there, two of the stock springs in there. They work to kind of give this a little more suspension. And when it's sitting on the ground, it forces the nose up, which will keep the angle of attack up higher when it's down on the ground, actually for takeoff and landing. Because under the weight of the batteries, when you got two 3S batteries in there, it's pretty heavy. Sitting right on, it sits right on top of that on that nose gear. That's actually the battery floor. You're looking at the bottom from the bottom of the airplane. Here's the little access hatch I made to be able to get to some of the wiring. The wing rod servo. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show it to you. This controlling the wing locking rod is actually mounted right underneath all that. You can kind of see the arm sticking out there. That's the control, the servo, the metal gear servo that's pulling in the locking rods for the folding wing. That is one hard servo to get to once this plane is built, which was part of the purpose for building this hatch. Kind of rough, didn't go as well as some of my other hatches, but basically magnet, magnet, cut the foam, made, took some old negative filming, it's pretty stiff, glued it to there, made a little antenna poke through on it that makes like a good little handhold. The guy just sits right down on there. He ain't coming off. Pretty nice retract guys, I really like these. They did very well with making these retracts as opposed to some of the other ones. Not that I didn't like the other ones either because they were, they were pretty nice too.